So I keep watching my review of The Amazing Spider-Man, and I think to myself, I should have mentioned this or that. Now I'm going to go over some things I feel should have been in my review, but hadn't come to my mind at the time. This is going to be completely spoiler-filled, by the way. Here we go. I'm aware that the iconic line, with great power comes great responsibility, wasn't actually said, but it was rephrased to where whatever Uncle Ben said essentially meant the same thing. But I'm still a bit pissed off it wasn't in the film. How easy would it have been to stick that line in at the end of the voicemail he left to Peter? What a perfect opportunity to stick it in, and it never came up. Putting that iconic line at the end of the voicemail would have made it so much more emotional and given the film a really nice line to end on. Sadly, that never happened. Dr. Kirk Connors. I said his plan to turn everyone in New York into lizards was rather silly, and yes, I know that this was in the comics, but I think audiences are far too sophisticated for something as cliche as that now. Like the way I feel about Clark Kent in glasses in modern day adaptations of Superman. I just don't buy that people are that stupid to not see past his glasses. Connors was rushed throughout the entire film. Part of this is due to the fact that his character was a victim of editing. This film was clearly edited to death because Sony made so many demands and controlled it a large amount of the movie. Originally, it had a lot more stuff about Peter's parents and Dr. Connor's relationship and involvement with them, but Sony thought this, this stuff wasn't going to work, so they made demands to cut a lot of that stuff out. This is partly why this film had such bad pacing. They had to cram a lot into this film. What The Amazing Spider-Man had going against it was it had people screaming do's and don'ts into its ear left, right and centre. It had to be a different story, yet it had to be an origin film again. It had to have a hook that differed it from the Raimi films, yet it so clearly had so much in similarity with it that Sony figured that putting the untold story in the trailers and posters would draw people into seeing a different Spidey film. After seeing the film, only a small amount of this film could be considered as one of a kind. When you get down to it, the reason this film was made was because unless Sony did something with the film rights to Spider-Man by 2012, the film rights would have reverted back to Marvel Studios. This is why The Amazing Spider-Man was made, and why it was made so soon after the Raimi films. So, at the core, this film wasn't made because someone simply wanted to make a great film. It was business. I'm sure director Mark Webb had the best of intentions, and I'm sure he wanted to make a great Spider-Man film. But what Sony did was it had its finger up this film's nose 24-7, not really allowing it to be what it wanted to be. Sony didn't trust a lot of the people making this film to make the right decisions, and so it lacks that inspired touch. It's like a checklist, and you know what? That's what a lot of this film felt like to me. It felt like it was presented to Sony, and they said, okay, people won't get that, take this out, put this in, that is too much like the Raimi film, take it out, do this, do that, etc. And by the end, the editor didn't really want to make these changes, and he just hit delete on a few scenes and said, It's done, Sony, you have what you wanted, now fuck off. And it lacks that feeling of having a natural layout. The movie doesn't feel like a movie to me. It felt like a bunch of things that Sony wanted out of Spider-Man Spider crammed together that happened to turn out to be two and a half hours long. As I said in my review of the film, The Web Shooters was a huge missed opportunity. It went by in ten seconds, and if you blinked, you missed it. This was another victim of the do's and don'ts of the film. They clearly thought to themselves, well the fans will love it if we put the web shooters in because it's directly taken from the comics. Now of course if they actually knew why we love, why we liked the web shooters, then perhaps we wouldn't have this problem. We loved, him, we loved them because it showed just how much of a genius Peter Parker was. We got to see his creativity and his mind work. But because they only thought we liked it because it was from the comics, they never got why we loved them in the first place. If you're going to do the web shooters, there needs to be a part of the movie that clearly goes through all this stuff. Once Peter gets his powers, he gets inspired by the webs that Spider makes. He starts researching the web and how it works. Then he starts testing liquid substances. Nothing works. Then he takes a look at his father's research on spiders and sees some kind of formula that he was missing. And he brings this to his own research and finally he creates the substance. Then makes the technical stuff and engineers it all, and finally we have the web shooters. Now, that was the kind of thing I hoped to see in this film. It's how it was done in the comics and I absolutely loved this idea. But you watch the film and there's one shot of the special webs at Oscorp Lab, then Peter makes the web shooters in 10 seconds. And the fact that Oscorp makes these webs in the film, 
If you're not going to have Peter actually create the webs, then what's the point of putting it in this film? It's an important part of, part of his intelligence, and in this, he doesn't even make them. Might as well have just gone with the organic webs if you weren't going to put any effort into this idea. But as long as we have the web shooters as all, at all, that's enough. So we'll take that off the list. Spider-Man's costume came out of nowhere. I liked the part that inspired him to wear a mask, which had a nice little subtle reference to the wrestling side of his origin from the comics, but there's a tiny bit of him looking through spandex on his computer, and then suddenly he's in the Spider-Man suit. Just like that. We can take that off the list as well. Uncle Ben gets a lot of attention, but the second he dies, there's no funeral, no information on what happens after that, only a scene of Peter grieving and getting pissed off. I felt like once he died, they ticked that off the list, and now we can go on to the other stuff because we're halfway into the film and we still haven't seen Spider-Man yet. It would have been nice if we had a scene or a funeral or something about Uncle Ben's death after he was shot. I felt like everyone forgot, ab forgot about him the second he died. Dr. Connors, as I've said loads of times now, his character became a mess. He never had a character arc. The writing of, of his character didn't know where it was going once he became the lizard. Where was his family? We know he has a family. This is supposed to be one of his relatable and unlikable qualities as a character and sympathetic villain, yet because there was so much to put in this film, it never really got a chance to be in there. The Amazing Spider-Man for me is a mixed bag. On one side, it got a lot of bad things about it. On another side, it's a really entertaining film. But a part of me feels a bit disappointed by the end result. You would have thought that after the disaster that was Spider-Man 3, Sony would have learned to not force things into a movie when it would have been much better had they just let these guys make a film. I want to love it, but I don't. I feel it's on par with the quality of the first Raimi Spider-Man movie. I think it's a film that could have been amazing, but it got poked and prodded by the studio and rushed so much that in the end it became a good Spider-Man movie, a reasonably okay origin with a very clustered and uneven story. In this movie's defence, it's getting bashed for not being on par with the Avengers or the Dark Knight Rises. Which it shouldn't be. This is an origin movie. The Avengers and the Dark Knight Rises are all epic, huge, mega movies. This is a start-out movie. It's a little baby at the moment. It should be on par with the other origin movies, and as far as origin movies go, this one did quite alright. I hope that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 won't get so pushed about by the studio making demands again as this time it won't be an origin movie, and therefore uh, they'll be able to just make a great Spider-Man movie without having so many restrictions as to what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Please comment, love hearing people's views on the video and the topic, definitely subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave me some. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you next time.